everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it is your first time here. My name is Jess. Today I'm going to be sharing with you all the books that I read in the month of June and I had a pretty good reading month in June if I do say so myself. So without further ado I'm going to talk to you about the books in the order that I read them. Let's jump in. So the first book that I finished in June was Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb. I know I have talked about this book a lot. I talked about it very briefly at the end of my May wrap up and I talk about it in my most recent reading vlog as well. Um, mostly because it's so big this is all I've been reading recently. So this is the third and final book in the Farseer trilogy which is adult high fantasy and obviously I can't tell you too much about what happens in this particular book without spoiling the earlier books but essentially we're following our main protagonist Fitz as he comes of age and as he begins to discover or has a war within himself over what he wants for himself and what he wants for his life versus what he feels duty bound to do in order to serve his kingdom and his king who incidentally also happens to be his uncle. There's also a much larger storyline at play here in which Fitz is supposedly the catalyst for a number of other events that take place within this world in future books. Um, there is just a whole lot going on within these books beyond just getting to know our immediate characters. We have magic, there is politics, there is love, there is loss, there is a whole lot crammed in and this book in particular I think I really enjoyed because you have the benefit of having read this before and then having read some of the future books in that I know the scene that Robin Hobb is setting and I know some of the the nuggets that she's dropping in this book that is setting up for later on and it was just a really enjoyable thing to reread it and remember some of those and think aha now I know what that relates to and at the time when I first read it I obviously didn't so yeah very very enjoyable I know and I again I sound like a broken record but these books will not be for everyone they are very slow they're very character driven it's about the reading experience and it's about this wider story that Robin Hobb and the wider world that Robin Hobb is creating but I really enjoyed it. Highly recommend. <laughs> the next book that I read was Malibu Rising and I appear to have completely lost my copy of Malibu Rising. I have the dust jacket here but uh, no book inside so um, I'm gonna hold up the dust jacket. So Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Um, if you've been around my channel a while you will know that I am a huge Taylor Jenkins Reid fan. This is her newest release and it was a much anticipated book for me um, and I enjoyed it hugely. I don't think that it was as strong as the likes of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo but there is just something about Taylor Jenkins Reid's writing style which is so authentic that it really just hooks you as a reader and you absolutely buy into the story that she is telling and it is just thoroughly thoroughly entertaining. So we have our, I feel like such a wally holding up this dust jacket, so we have our primary storyline which is set in the early 80s and we are following the four Reaver siblings in the build-up to a very notorious house party which is hosted every year in the home of Nina Reaver the eldest sibling and each of our siblings is in the run-up to the party going through some kind of significant life event or they're making a discovery about themselves or a decision so there is a real sense of tension and anticipation as we run up to the party. We're also following a past storyline so we have Mick Reaver who is the father of the four children who is a very famous very well-known singer and his relationship with their mother June and so we're watching that develop and play out alongside our more current present day storyline. There's also a connection between Daisy Jones and the Six and the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo which I really really like when I realised who Mick Reaver was and that there was a connection with those other two books I thought that was really clever just a nice little twist or a nice little addition for people who have read all three of the books I really liked that and I mentioned that quite a bit in my recent reading vlog if you haven't watched that. Where I think that this book struggled is that there were a lot of characters because we are following the four siblings and we're following Mick 
and we're following June's story. There was just a whole lot going on and I haven't got the book so I can't show you but it's not actually that long of a story and so it feels very surface level but also at times it felt like it was just lost in which direction it was going to go in, who we were meant to focus our attention on the most. It was very much like just peeking into the lives of these characters for a really short period of time and that is fine if that's the kind of book that you like. For me I like character development, I like a longer story arc for my characters, I like to get to know my characters and I want to empathise with them and sympathise with them um, and recognise what they're going through and you don't get that with this and I think that's because there are so many characters and they're all going through something and we're kind of very quickly just thrown in to the middle of what is going on in their lives. It's still very entertaining, it's still very enjoyable. I adore Taylor Jenkins Reid's writing style, I just think it is fantastic. Um, I'll talk about another one of her books in a minute. Yeah, just really really enjoy her writing style. Um, it just lacked a bit and I thought The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, the character development, even though there are a lot of side characters, the way she develops the character and the story of Evelyn Hugo was done so incredibly well and I was sort of expecting that for this and maybe it could have done with fewer characters. I don't know. I'd still recommend it. I gave it four stars. It's a good entertaining read and I would recommend it. Next I read The Wonder by Emma Donoghue. This is historical fiction set in the 1800s, the mid-1800s, and we're following a former Nightingale nurse called Lib who is sent to Ireland to watch over an 11 year old girl called Anna who supposedly hasn't eaten or drunk anything for the past four months and the locals are starting to say you know is it a miracle is she a miraculous child is she a gift from God um, she's becoming something of a local legend and so the the kind of local people in authority bring in a nun and they bring in Lib and they charge them with watching Anna for two weeks to work out what is going on is there some deception at play or is it actually something miraculous taking place and there is very much, I think I mentioned this in my summer TBR video because this was on the list, that reading the blurb of it, blurb of it? Reading the blurb of it gave me The Good People by Hannah Kent vibes in that there is this darker atmospheric feel to it and some, the sense of something sinister happening that is just a little bit beyond your grasp as a reader. Having now read it I would say that I would probably recommend The Good People above this. This is a good story and I didn't see the twist coming at the end. Um, I didn't really guess what was actually going on but it's very surface level. The Good People is much more descriptive, it's much more in depth. It definitely has that added element which this was missing. I also didn't like the fact that um, our English nurse Lib was constantly criticising and being derogatory about the Irish. Now I know that there was friction between the English and the Irish and in some places there continues to be but it was a constant, constant thing in this book to the point that it became a distraction from the narrative and I just didn't think it was necessary one or two to allow us to have that kind of cultural reference and to understand where Lib was coming from and to understand how some of the people in the village and how Anna's parents might have viewed Lib as an English nurse coming into their um, their home and their area fine but it was just a constant constant stream of yeah derogatory comments about the Irish and I didn't like that at all. So on the whole it was okay, I think it could have been better. It definitely has a dark, atmospheric, almost thrillerish vibe to it blended in with the historical fiction but it was only a three star read for me. So once I had read Malibu Rising I went ahead and ordered all of Taylor Jenkins Reid's backlist but I already happened to own Maybe In Another Life so I thought that I may as well start here because I know that I definitely want to read everything that she has written. So this is contemporary fiction and we're following 29 year old Hannah who has lived something of a nomadic lifestyle. Basically when she's a teen her parents move with her sister to London because her sister gets an opportunity to go to a school there and Hannah moves in with her best friend and from that point, once Hannah goes away to college, she moves from city to city, from job to job, from relationship 
relationship to relationship and just never really settles down and when we meet Hannah she is just moving back to her home city after another failed relationship and she is moving back in with her best friend. In this book we explore two possible outcomes from a decision that Hannah makes one night so one of her old flames approaches her at a party and asks her to go home with him and in one storyline she says yes and in one storyline she says no and we follow the two possible strands. I have to admit that I'm not normally a fan of alternative universes, um, kind of the whole quantum physics, multiple worlds thing that exists. It's not really my jam but it's actually done very very mildly in this book and it is very entertaining. On the whole this is just a very sweet story. It wasn't anything mind-blowing uh, but yeah it's just a very sweet story about belonging, about family and about where home really is. I didn't necessarily agree with all the decisions that Hannah made in her alternate lives um, or some of the conclusions that she drew should I say. But yeah just a very sweet story and I gave it 3.5 stars. The next book that I picked up was Tidelands by Philippa Gregory and it has been a while since I have read a Philippa Gregory book. She used to be my go-to author for historical fiction and then I read her Wide Acre trilogy I want to say which featured an incestuous relationship and it just was not for me at all uh, and it put me right off picking up her books but when I read the synopsis for this it sounded like it would be exactly the type of historical fiction book that I would enjoy so I decided to give it a go. So it's set during 1648 and we are following the rise and potential fall of a family on the south coast in England. So our main protagonist is a woman called Eleanor who previously before the Civil War was working as a midwife. I will say actually as a side note that this does feature the whole wise woman, witch, healer, fair folk trope. So if that's not something that you enjoy then you probably will not enjoy this. Um, so at the beginning of the book she is very much living on the edges of the community, she is living in poverty, her husband has abandoned her and her two children and she's just doing her best to make ends meet and then she comes into contact with a stranger and because of what she does next her fortune and the fortune of her children begins to change. One of the elements that I really liked about this book was the fact that we are following an ordinary person. There is obviously some wider political things going on. This is written at the time of Cromwell and the Civil War and the Roundheads and the Royalists and all that and it does affect the lives of the people in this community and we see how it affects them but we also just get to see the outplaying of an ordinary person's life and how that would be at this time and I really really enjoyed that. I will say that my main criticism of the book is how absolutely slow it was. The plot just meanders along for the longest time and although I was enjoying the writing style, although I was enjoying getting to know the characters, I was also thinking where is this going? I know it's the first one in the series, where is it going? What is happening? It takes a really long time to make its way there. The reason that I gave it 3.5 stars, 3.75 stars, is because the ending was absolute fire. It was just so, so good and it made me really excited for Dark Tides, which is the next one which I have recently purchased. I think that book is going to be fantastic. It was a shame that it took this book so long to get there. It was still okay and it very much is a scene setting book, but lord did it take a long time to get where it needed to go um so yeah i marked it slightly down for that but i'm very very excited and curious now to see how philippa gregory is going to take the story and run with it so yeah three three a 3.5 3.75 star read next i picked up my book clubs pick for the month if you don't know i run a book club it's a fantastic community at the moment we're doing something really fun which i'll explain in another video because it's influencing some content that i'm going to make later on where we're picking a word um and then choosing books with that word in the title but for june we were wanted but for June we wanted to read an Agatha Christie and we went for The Murder of Roger Ackroyd and Confession Time. This is my first Agatha Christie book. I have watched TV adaptations, I've watched movies, but I have never read one of her 
books so I was a little bit apprehensive going in to think what will I think of it how will it be but honestly I absolutely loved it it was so fun it was so entertaining it was just there was just this dry sense of humor that absolutely spoke to me I just thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it so this is the story of um, Roger Ackroyd whose fiance Mrs Ferrers has found having committed suicide and less than 24 hours later Roger himself is found murdered and we have Poirot who is living incognito in the village where these deaths take place and he is pulled in to work out what has happened and honestly I had so many theories it was just really fun to go into a book of this type with an open mind and looking for the red herrings and looking for the clues and trying to piece it all together before the big reveal at the end and I will admit that I got pretty close um, to one of this one of the elements but I didn't quite have the reasoning behind me but yeah I just really really enjoyed it it was a very quick read it was very entertaining as I say thought the humour was very much on point for me um it has made me very keen to pick up some more of Agatha Christie's books because I thoroughly enjoyed it much more than I think I was expecting to but yeah definitely would recommend and if you were like me and you haven't ever picked up any Agatha Christie then um would highly recommend this one and the final book that I read in June was another highly anticipated read for me and that was The Children of Jocasta by Natalie Haynes since reading Circe by Madeline Miller a couple of years ago it has really sparked a love of Greek mythological retellings for me and I'm just constantly on the hunt for ones to add to my list I read A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes last year and really enjoyed it but I wanted more of a fuller story that dips in and out of various women's lives and I wanted more of a fuller more rounded story or narrative and someone recommended this to me and I was very much looking forward to reading it and on the whole it did not disappoint so we're following two women we are following Jocasta and we are following her daughter Antigone although Antigone's story is told from the point of view of her sister Ismene um, and the four were basically following alternate chapters for their lives and these are two women whose stories are previously untold so they feature in Greek myths but we don't know that much about them and so Natalie Haynes is reimagining what their stories might have looked like and it was just it was just thoroughly thoroughly enjoying as I say I really like the I like the dark edge that there is to Greek myths, um, particularly in the mythological retellings. I like that it's quite gritty um, and I like the characters, I like the, that it's brutal and you never know what is coming around the corner. The amount of times that people are just murdered for various different reasons or sacrificed for various different reasons, it's just quite horrendous but also I find it quite entertaining and yeah I really really enjoyed this I will definitely be looking to pick up Natalie Haynes's other stuff I will say that at times it was a little bit repetitive and it did veer into boring a few times um but on the whole I did really enjoy it I mean I'm constantly it's almost a shame that the first mythological retelling that I read was Circe because I adored that book and I have yet to find a book that matches that in terms of Greek mythology and the retellings that are out there I have not found a book that quite takes me to that place and so I'm constantly comparing every book it would almost have been better for me to read all of these first and then read Circe um, because now it's like will any book ever compare to the incredible story that was Circe this one certainly has a good go and it was very enjoyable and very entertaining and I think if you like this type of book then you will enjoy this um but yes so I gave this four stars so there you go they are all the books that I read in the month of June I think I had a pretty good reading month there wasn't really anything that I read that I strongly disliked even The Wonder which I would say was my least favorite book of the month I still think is a pretty solid 
read which puts me in a very good place to start in July and see how my reading goes for this month so yeah thank you very much for watching do leave me a comment let me know if you've read any of the books that I have talked about this month or let me know what your favorite read was in the month of June I always love to chat more with you in the comments if you enjoyed this video please give me the thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you aren't already I hope that you are all keeping safe and well and I'll see you soon